This is Prime 7 Local News with Madeleine Collignon, Kenny Hinckley and meteorologist Carl Linders with your local weather. Now, Prime 7 Local News at 6. Tonight, Byron Shire Council is getting tough on illegal campers, fed up with the disgusting mess they leave behind. A new drug action team to tackle the ice problem in the Hastings, Manning and Maclay. The changing face of Bellingen's cafe strips as they undergo a $1.7 million makeover. And a stormy end to the working week. Your weather details soon. Good evening. It's normally one of the most picturesque parts of the North Coast, but illegal campers are turning the dunes around Byron Bay into landfills. The community is fed up with every form of rubbish imaginable being left to pollute the fragile environment. And as the weather warms up, there are fears illegal campsites could lead to bushfires. The crystal clear beaches of Byron Bay, a holiday maker's dream. It's hard to believe just over the dunes there's a nightmare unfolding. They leave everything from broken bottles to feces uh, to old beds, mattresses. Illegal campers. Byron Shire Council estimates on any one night up to 160 are setting up where they're not allowed. These pictures taken by council staff show what's nearly a squatter's camp in the area. The issue is that these people don't pay uh, their way, they don't make a contribution to the tourist economy. Recently, Belongil and Broken Head have been hot spots. We're here in the sand dunes just behind a popular beach north of Byron Bay and we found mountains of rubbish. Everything from mattresses, old clothes to bottles strewn right through the scrub. The signs that this was a campsite not that long ago are everywhere. Rubbish aside, it's the fire threat which has most people angry. They have a fire in, in, in fire danger areas. That's, that is... It's endangering life, it's endangering wildlife, it's also endangering the uh, lives of the firefighters. And while there's one set of rules for most, others are making up their own. Taken to pulling out, pulling out the no standing zones, when it's convenient for them to stop there, they'll just rip them out and throw them in the bush. As the summer holidays approach, council is preparing for a crackdown. The on-the-spot fine's $110. If a person was taken to court um, for simply the camping activity, it could range to $2,200. Chris Wall, Prime 7 News. A driver and three children were lucky to walk away with only minor injuries after a bad smash at Bonville last night. Emergency services were called at 7.20 to the accident on the Pacific Highway. Police say a 41-year-old man was driving with three children, a 10-year-old and two 8-year-olds, when the car clipped a car in front. The front vehicle, driven by a 46-year-old woman, then ran into a concrete barrier. It caused chaos for other drivers. Oh, just seen a Commodore all smashed up on the left side of the road. I just thought, that's strange, what's that shadow? Oh, it's not looking good. And then look right, and then next minute, this fella's right in front of me, and I had nothing to do but hit the anchors. And the man and three children were taken to hospital, all with minor injuries. Police are still awaiting blood alcohol tests and investigating what caused the crash. There's more assistance on the horizon for drug and alcohol services across the mid-north coast. A local drug action team has been established to take that fight to the next level. In 2016, more than 1,800 Australians died from drug use. That's the highest number in 20 years. And the National Drug Survey reveals methamphetamines, including the drug ICE, are causing the most concern for local communities. A local drug action team has now been established on the mid-north coast. Port Macquarie Hastings Elder will be looking at trying to do that. Part of their project will be around curbing the ice epidemic within the local community. It leads to crime, family breakdown, violence, all the things that we don't want in our part of the world. Mid-North Coast police, like officers right across the country, are fighting an uphill battle. Since 1999, it's five times more likely a deadly drug overdose will involve a methamphetamine like ice. And how difficult of a project is that to uh, curb that epidemic? Well, it's, it's certainly very difficult, um, you know, because it's hard to cure, but um, you've got to start somewhere. But the action team won't just tackle the ice problem. Fifteen organisations dedicated to working together on a targeted local response for drugs and alcohol. Today they received a $10,000 boost in funding. It's vitally important that we build a fence at the top of the cliff, not send an ambulance to the bottom of the cliff to pick up the pieces. So we want to see our kids drug free. Samantha Crow, Prime 7 News.
Work is in full swing, making Bellingen's popular cafe precinct safer and more appealing. Council says it's short-term pain for long-term gain. Work has been underway for about eight weeks, upgrading two intersections at Bellingen's busiest cafe precincts, here at Church Street and also up at Oak Street by the Cenotaph. And we want to make sure that those areas you know, get a higher focus in the future and, and a better amenity for all those to visit those areas. A very important part of the project is levelling out any hazardous areas, making it safer for people with a disability and the elderly to navigate. Council concedes it is impacting on business for a short period. It's paramount that we try and minimise the disruption on the businesses because it is a, it's a, it's a really main concentration for the Bellingen uh, Chamber uh, for that type of business. Customers seem to be understanding. Oh well it's nice to do the town up but the only comment I'd make is that it seems as though there's going to be less car parks. I think Bellingen certainly needs tidying up and improvement but I would prefer to see um, priority put on pay, uh, footpaths on the north side. Work is currently on time and on budget due to wrap up within the next six to eight weeks, well before the Christmas school holidays. It's a $1.7 million project, mostly state government funded. Sky Carl, Prime 7 News. The Mid Coast Business Chamber will petition the state government to review the cost of its new bottle recycling scheme. Yesterday, Prime 7 News reported that a small Tari soft drink manufacturer will have to pay more than $300,000 towards the container deposit scheme. The Mid Coast Chamber of Commerce says regional businesses cannot afford government imposts of that scale and the scheme will cost jobs in rural New South Wales. I'd really like them to think about the effect on small regional businesses. It's, it's tough enough in regional New South Wales and Australia as it is. What we don't need is another government impost to make it even harder. The Chamber of Commerce has called on the state government to use its record budget surplus to provide low-cost loans to small business to cover the recycling charges. The Tari community has come up with a great way of encouraging people to lose weight. The basic idea is that dieters must find sponsors to pay them to drop kilos, with all the money going to children's hospitals. Australia is one of the fattest countries in the world, though for many it's hard to find the motivation to shed the weight. But in Tari, for the next eight weeks, you can be sponsored to drop the kilograms. One business is already on board. For every kilo you lose, a dollar goes to children's hospitals. And more sponsors are being sought. We'd like any business who is willing to get on board to, to match the donation. So for every kilo lost, we're going to be donating a dollar to the Humpty Dumpty Foundation. And we'd really love it if other businesses got on board. Excessive weight is linked to type 2 diabetes and cancer. But during the Fit and Lean Challenge, two Tari fitness trainers will give free nutritional advice and do weekly weigh-ins at their gyms. Hopefully we're trying to see a break down that barriers between um, people that haven't been to the gym, people that do, and, and showing them that it's safe and fun. Every week participants fail to lose weight, they pay a $5 penalty to charity. The trainers say it's vital to slim down. Every five kilos of body weight that you carry is 20 kilos of force on the knee joint. So when people say, oh, I've got a sore knee, the doctor, the first thing they usually say is, you know, try and lose some weight. There's a $50 fee to join and you can sign up tomorrow night at Snap Fitness Taree or Halliday's Point Health and Fitness. Christine Tondorf, Prime 7 News. One of the country's best swimmers is back training in Port Macquarie. Samantha Crow is there and Sam, what can you tell us? He's an Olympic silver medalist and two-time world champion and James Magnuson is back in Port Macquarie training in preparation for the Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast next year. Now the homegrown hero is expected to return to Sydney at the end of next week but he is back in town with his coaches Mitch and Lachlan Falvey and both of those boys are Port Macquarie exports as well. Now we'll have all of the details on their progress in a special report at six o'clock tomorrow night here on Prime 7 News. Excellent stuff. Can't wait. Samantha Crow there in Port Macquarie. Thank you.
Let's get a check of the weather now with meteorologist Carl Linders. And Carl, it was warm and humid, but no rain in sight today. No, but the humidity is building in lieu of a storm outbreak tomorrow. Maddie, hello everybody. Temperatures along the coast, quite pleasant, but it was quite humid also. Northeasterly winds well established through our part of the world and that's extending inland this afternoon to 32 degrees at Casino with a northeaster coming in now. Radar shows not much shower activity. We've got fairly clear conditions at the moment, but there is a trough sitting through Queensland that will activate tomorrow and that's going to be ahead of this system as well. Merging systems, a lot of moisture in the atmosphere and a jet stream will combine to bring our first severe thunderstorm outbreak of the season. Temperatures will cool down for the start of the weekend, a period of drier southerly winds, so we'll have a break from the humidity, but then it's back next week with warmer weather too. So I'll take you through all that. A big, a lot of rain, guys, coming our way tomorrow and then more next week. Lots on the, lots on the go. Yeah, it certainly Sounds is. Okay. All right, thanks, mate. See you soon. Um, still to come in Prime 7 News, will Ballina's new pool be open in time for summer? And the Dragon Boat athletes off to China for the World Championships. The problem is plaguing the multi-million dollar redevelopment of Ballina's pool. And questions are now being asked. So how long until it opens? Summer's still two months away, but it's already heating up here in Ballina. Unfortunately, it looks like the pool development's not going to be finished in time for the holiday season. The pool development needs a power upgrade, which Ballina Shire Council claims Essential Energy didn't tell it until after construction started. To date, the physical build is running to time, but it's believed the power provider will not be able to do what it needs to until January. In a statement to Prime 7 News, Essential Energy says it is still investigating what work is actually needed and it should have a better idea in coming weeks. Council wants the issue addressed as soon as possible. We passed at last week's council meeting that we would put as much pressure as we can. There's a few people that know people, but one way or the other, um, the pools will be open as soon as we can physically get them open. Ballina Shire Council does have a backup plan. It has two generators in reserve, ready to power the facility if it looks like there's going to be an extended delay. Bellingen Shire will remain on level one water restrictions despite this week's rain. Water levels in the Bellingen River have been dropping and were a concern to council four weeks ago. That's when the restrictions came into force from Dorigo through to the seaboard. The water restrictions are triggered when the river gets to 47 megalitres a day flow rate. It got down to about 32 last week prior to our welcome rain on the weekend and it's now back up to about 43. Level 1 restrictions mean limited use of water between 9 and 4 daily. Two members of the Great Lakes Dragon Boat Club have been selected for the Australian team to compete in the World Championships. They leave for a national training race next week, then on to China. It's a sport that originated in China 2,000 years ago, but it's only taken off in Australia in the past 30 years. Frank Fennick got into dragon boat racing after seeing a regatta five years ago and says paddling is a great exercise. For us, especially our age, it's a low impact but high strength sport. So we don't have to be running around jarring our bodies and you know we can just basically concentrate on staying fit. In the international competition, Frank will be competing in the 60s plus division and his main rivals will be Canada, America and Germany. Clubmate Wendy Orman will join him in the Kangmin province. She's competing in the 50 to 60 division where Canada will be Australia's main rival. But for the men's 20s age bracket, China is the undisputed leader. And they are the world champions. They are the group that we look up to and try to emulate as much as possible. <laughs> Dragon boats are around 12 metres long and are raced in teams of 20. Around 120 paddlers are on the Australian team across the five age brackets. The president of the Great Lakes Pearl Dragons is thrilled to see two of her clubmates on the Aussie team. These guys inspire the rest of the club because you can not only paddle at club level, you can also paddle at regional and state level. The Great Lakes Pearl Dragons have also been named New South Wales Dragon Boat Club of the Year from a field of 65. Christine Tondorf, Prime 7 News. Still to come in Prime 7 News, local contenders look the goods for the Port Macquarie Cup. And prime conditions for golfers hitting the course at Bonville. The New South Wales men's four ball championships are underway at Bonville. 60 of the state's best were under pressure on the final day of competition.
60 competitors took to the Greens yesterday for day one of the two-day competition, each of them having qualified by winning club rounds, then on to district. They've beaten roughly 15,000 players to make it to this final, although still representing a mixed bag. We've got people who are playing off handicaps of two and three. Um, we've got some that are playing off handicaps of 27, 28, 29. So... Uh, a little bit of everything. Rain earlier this week has led to perfect conditions at Bondville Golf Resort, a distinct change of scenery for many players who've come from as far as Albury in the state's south. They're from all around the state, um, some that play on sand greens golf courses, um, so coming here to Bonville is a, a real change in environment and uh, atmosphere for them. The football championship is social by design. Organisers say simply gathering together for the tournament is the real prize. You know, there's a little bit of banter between the, the individuals as well, so uh, when uh, one player doesn't have a good hole, hopefully that's when their uh, partner kicks in and they have their good holes. The event wraps up today. Sky Carl, Prime 7 News. For the first time in nearly 20 years, Ballina will host a major representative rugby league match with Scotland taking on the country under 23s. It's a warm up for the Scots with the World Cup only 21 days away. The game is bringing some of the NRL's big names to town. Organisers hopeful the North Coast will turn up in support. There's a lot of high profile people that'll be here, like, uh, for instance, uh, Peter Wallace from Penrith is in the Scotland side. You've got Lachlan Coote, uh, who also plays for the Cowboys, along with another Cowboys player. There's uh, about six or seven NRL players. That game is at the Seagulls' home ground on Friday the 20th of October, with gates opening at 3.30. Other pre-game action includes Ladies League tag and an under-16s trial match. There's just one sleep until the biggest race on the Port Macquarie race calendar. With four horses ready to run, John Sprague is a good chance for a handful of winners in this year's Port Cup Carnival. Giltra is the only Port Macquarie horse with a run in tomorrow's Port Cup. The five-year-old gelding will be ridden by award-winning Port Macquarie export Andrew Adkins. After narrowly missing the win in the prelude, Giltra's owners are chomping at the bit for tomorrow's race. Grandmother, granddaughters and daughters, they're, there's about ten of them. They've, all, they've got free runners tomorrow, all at the Port Cup meeting, so they're, they're pretty excited. The ladies also own St Dennis, a four-year-old gelding racing the maiden plate. It's his first race under his new trainer, as well as four-year-old mare Zoezy, who is a good chance in the maiden for fillies and mares. Jamalee is locally owned and will also hit the track with Sprague's training for the benchmark handicap. She'll be ridden by Peter Graham. And named after a local street, Shelley Beach Road in the Class 2 handicap has been flagged as the one to beat. That's five horses and just one trainer. Plus Sprague also has four running on Saturday. Yes, it's a hard day that everybody's chasing the money, but hopefully we can keep it in the town. In total, the races are worth a whopping $150,000 for the horses owners. With five for the day, there's a good chance some of those winners will be a John Sprague horse. I've got a few chances there, but you could, all, you could have a good day and then again you could have a bad day. So you've just got to hope for the luck on the day. The first race is at 1.15. Samantha Crow, Prime 7 News. Looks like we could be seeing some severe thunderstorms heading across parts of the north coast tomorrow afternoon. Carl will have all the very latest details straight after the break. For a look at the latest weather forecast, it's now back to Carl. And Carl, severe thunderstorms on the way for us tomorrow. First round of a Matty, absolutely right. We've got the right ingredients tomorrow with the trough moving in from the southwest, moisture from the northeast, a jet stream above. So we've got likelihood of some pretty lively showers and storms coming through mid afternoon tomorrow. It does clear out on Saturday. It's only a brief burst, then heavy rain redeveloping from Sunday into Monday. Tuesday, we've got some storms, clears out again, but one more band coming through again by this time next week. So there's many opportunities for us to get rainfall throughout very thirsty parts of the world and a big system is still being progged at the end of the sequence. So certainly a lot of moisture to work with. If you're heading to Bathurst though, some pretty heavy rain is anticipated across much of the racetrack over, well Mount Panorama that is, over the afternoon. So we'll keep an eye on that if you're heading down to Bathurst. So tomorrow we'll have the heavy rain in that northeastern corner. Up to 50 millimetres possible on the ranges in one day is 
very likely with the amount of moisture available. We'll see that kick off in the south tomorrow morning. Not as heavy in the south, patchy showers, the odd thunderstorm probably north of Taree and it will make it towards the north by the evening. Temperatures will come down. Southerly change is due in to the south by mid-morning in the north by the evening and that will lead into a cooler Saturday. So one or two showers in the north. Thunderstorms redeveloping at night. That rainfall is at night so a good day to get out and about ahead of Sat Sunday where we have showers and storms around, particularly in the south and some heavy falls will spread northeast by the afternoon and evening. It's a bit ambiguous at the moment, so we'll have more information to pin down for you tomorrow on Sunday's rainfall. So guys, a wet outlook, a bit yeah. hard to say where the heaviest of the rain will be, but certainly some falls around. Yeah, potentially busy day tomorrow with those storms. Be. Okay, mate, thanks. That's your local news for tonight. Thanks for your company. You can discuss tonight's stories on Facebook. And also catch tonight's top stories on our website. Do stay with us. Prime 7 News at 6.30 with Daniel Gibson is up next. Have a great night. We'll see you again tomorrow.